Drawing Out the Facts, the Naked Science Scrapbook. Hello and welcome to the Naked Science Scrapbook from the Naked Scientists. This time we're answering the question, how do lasers work? Most of us use lasers every day, probably without even realising it. They're in CD and DVD players where the laser reads the disc. They're in laser printers where the laser writes letters, words and images onto the printing drum to make the ink stick in the right places. A laser logs what you buy at the supermarket checkout and lasers frequently feature in films, usually in the hands of the evil adversaries of James Bond. But why do we need lasers to do these sorts of jobs and how do they actually work? A laser beam is actually a special form of light. So first of all, let's think about how light is produced normally. We'll use a light bulb as an example. The filament of a conventional bulb is made up of the metal tungsten, and around each of the tungsten atoms is a cloud of electrons. Each of these electrons can have different discrete amounts of energy, which can be thought of as representing different energy levels. And if we heat up the material, we can excite the electrons and make them jump up to a higher energy level than they would normally occupy. But they don't stay up there forever, and when they drop back down, they can shed the extra energy by emitting a packet of light called a photon. The timing with which this happens and the direction in which the photon is emitted are both completely random. Some electrons might drop back down after one microsecond, others might take ten. And far from being a minor foible of quantum mechanics, this process is actually the very reason why anything lights up at all whether it's a neon sign outside a convenience store or the glow of your digital watch. But there is another way that atoms can emit light. When an atom that's already been excited by electricity, a chemical reaction or light, is hit by a photon of a particular energy, this can make the atom simultaneously emit a daughter photon with exactly the same energy and direction. This is called stimulated emission, and it means that if you have a material full of excited atoms, you can start with one photon and very quickly amplify this signal to produce millions more, all of them identical to the first. This is known as light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation, or laser for short. So, what does a laser actually look like? Whether we're talking about a tiny laser pointer or something intended to be used as a military weapon, most lasers comprise a cavity filled with excitable atoms and with a mirror at each end. The atoms can be in the form of a gas like carbon dioxide, solids like rubies or even liquids containing dyes. The laser is kick-started by adding energy to the cavity. This can be in the form of a flash of light, a chemical reaction or electrical energy in the form of a spark or a constant current. To begin with, photons will be spontaneously emitted from the excited atoms in all directions. But most of these are absorbed by the walls of the cavity, except for those bouncing back and forth between the two mirrors at each end, which hit the excited atoms along the way and amplify themselves. One of the mirrors is engineered to reflect only 99% of the light hitting it, allowing through the other 1%, which we see coming out of the end as the laser beam. And because all the photons are travelling in the same direction, the beam of a laser is parallel and doesn't spread out like the beam of a torch. In fact, the beam is so straight that a briefcase-sized mirror left behind on the lunar surface by the Apollo astronauts in the 1970s is still used on a daily basis to reflect a laser beam back to Earth in order to accurately measure the distance to the Moon to a precision of less than one millimetre. Another feature of the beam being so parallel is that the light, and therefore the energy of the laser, can be focused onto a tiny point, meaning that they can be used to make delicate incisions during surgical procedures like laser eye surgery, and in industry to cut through metal or to precision engineer specialist components. Lasers are also used to send and amplify signals sent along fibre optic cables, which is how most of the information on the internet is transmitted and more powerful megawatt lasers have been engineered to be carried by a 747 plane to shoot down missiles, while others have been developed to trigger nuclear fusion by heating up and compressing small balls of frozen hydrogen, releasing large amounts of energy and paving the way for the energy production of the future. That's it for this time. 
To get the answers to more science questions, join us online at thenakedscientist.com forward slash scrapbook. Bye.